Hello guys and welcome to my channel once again for another Super Sunday video. Today we will talk about the cruise flight level or altitude and at which altitudes do the airplanes fly. Firstly I will check uh, some of the restrictions which the pilots need to follow before planning the cruise altitude and uh, after that I will check uh, where do the different commercial airlines fly and which is their highest uh, flight level. If you want to know more about the right uh, flight level to use, don't go away and stay tuned. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like at the end. So let's get started. So to start with, uh, we will firstly repeat some of the main rules uh, which uh, we need to follow when planning a flight. The first rule which splits IFR traffic from VFR traffic is the available planned altitude or flight level. The general uh, rule is that the IFR traffic will take altitudes using the end numbers of 000 or flight level using the last number as 0. These are the planned altitudes as 5000 feet, 7000 feet or flight level as 140, 170 and 360. But the VFR traffic will add 500 feet to the flight levels and altitudes uh, which are used by the IFR traffic. Here the altitudes 4500 feet, uh, 7500 feet or flight levels 115 and 135 are used. That is the first main rule, uh, but there is another one. Generally speaking, uh, when flying uh, to the west, uh, you will have to plan an even number as a flight level 160, 280 or 340. And when flying to the east, you should use the odd number uh, for flight levels as 170, 290 and 350. As we know now uh, the main rules, uh, we can continue and take a look at the restrictions that we need to follow. Now as we will take a look at the restrictions, uh, we will learn that there are different limits when planning your cruise altitude. There are restrictions which determine the lower flight limit and some of them uh, determine the upper flight limit of your cruising altitude. But before taking a look into them, let's firstly say a few words about where uh, the phrase flight level uh, is used and only the altitude uh, where is it used. Um, these two phrases are determined only by the transition altitude and the transition level. The transition altitude is determined for every single airport and uh, when on climb and crossing that altitude the pilot should change the altimeter seating settings uh, from local QNH to standard which is 1013 hectopascals or a 29.92 inches of mercury, uh, but also that altitude determines uh, that below that line the phrase altitude is used, but above the line the phrase flight level is used. The same follows when descending and crossing through the transition level, uh, but there the pilot does the vice versa to the altimeter settings and when descending below the line the phrase altitude is used, but above the line uh, the phrase flight level is used. Altogether, the both transition altitude and transition level form a transition layer uh, where no cruise flight should be taken. And this is our first restriction that we need to follow. By that, we can continue with restrictions and firstly take a look at the lower flight limits uh, which are defined by the minimum flight altitudes uh, which is determined by the terrain where you are taking the flight. At that point you should fly at least above the minimum flight altitude determined by local regulations or 2000 feet above the highest obstacle or within 8 kilometers of the flight route in mountainous areas. Elsewhere uh, than the two mentioned items you should fly at least 1000 feet above the highest obstacle within 8 kilometers. Following that, another restriction to follow uh, when flying IFR is definitely the minimum en route altitude. The so-called MEAA is published on en route charts and the values of MEAA are determined by the low and high altitude routes. As we know uh, some of the lower flight limits, uh, let's take a look at the upper flight limits. Here we do not have restrictions because of the terrain, but most probably due to the capabilities of the airplane. 
The maximum flight altitude of the aircraft is determined by the manufacturer and in many cases the jet-driven commercial or business aircrafts have the ceiling of somewhere between the flight level 3900 and flight level 450. But at that point the propeller-driven aircraft do not have the same ceiling as the jet-driven ones. The problem is due to the air density and more or less the propeller-driven aircrafts fly at lower altitudes somewhere around flight level 250, but that is not always the case as uh, they can have much higher or lower service ceiling. And here uh, we come to another upper restriction which is the restriction of pressurized cabin. Many commercial airlines uh, need the pressurized cabin as if they wouldn't have it, e the environment would be uncomfortable for the passengers and the crew. The rule to follow is that the airplanes without the cabin pressurization are allowed to fly at around 10,000 feet, but really not higher as the passengers and crew would suffer from hypoxia or any other sicknesses uh, due to unpressurized cabin. But the airplane can climb higher if the cabin is pressurized of, or the oxygen masks uh, are used. Following that, another rule to follow is the RVSM, uh, which means that the reduced vertical separation minimum uh, is applied above flight level 2900 till flight level 410 inclusively. Uh, if the aircraft is not capable of RVSM, it shouldn't plan the climb above flight level 2900, but in some cases the climb can also be approved. Apart from all the mentioned restrictions, uh, there are also many other restrictions which pilots need to follow when planning a flight. But there is another crucial restriction which is also used, uh, but it is not implemented as the cruise altitude restriction. These restrictions are called seat or star altitude restrictions and they are used when the aircraft is on departure or arrival. The seat indicates uh, standard instrument departure and there can be different altitude restrictions when departing from an airport. There can be different published altitudes uh, which can determine that the aircraft should be above, below or at the defined altitude at the determined point. There can also be altitude windows where aircraft should cross the point above and at the same time below the written altitude. The same also applies to star uh, or standard terminal arrival routes. That's all that I wanted to tell you in the today's video and I hope I have explained the thing in the way you can understand. So you will now know which altitude or flight level to take depending on your aircraft and the restrictions which are applied. And as we are also talking about flight levels, let me also mention that the Concorde flew at flight level uh, 600 uh, when it was operational, which is around 20,000 feet higher above the normal commercial airlines flight altitudes. Comment below if you want to know the cruising flight level of your favorite aircraft and please leave a like at the end. By that also please show me support and subscribe to my channel. New videos are on the way so stay tuned and that's it. See you soon. Bye bye.